Well, it looks like GPU season is back and officially upon us. And the reason why we know that is because of all the leaks and rumors that have been coming out over the last several weeks. And I'm a little bit behind the curve here. I've been busy with other things, but it's time for me to do my take on all the latest GPU news and information. Now, I wanna make this abundantly clear. We have very few facts. Most of everything out there is nothing more than an educated guess, a rumor, a leak things of that nature. And so I want to divide and separate all of that stuff and say, hey, look, here's what we actually know to be true. And here's everything that's coming from a leak or a rumor and things of that nature. Now, we got a lot to talk about from pricing to availability to specifications and performance. But first, a quick word from today's video sponsor. Today's video was sponsored by FlexiSpot and their E7 Pro premium standing desk and their C7 ergonomic office chair. Gamers, we sit entirely too much and that is is why we need a standing desk. Sitting is the new smoking and we all need to stand more. And the E7 Pro premium standing desk allows you to stand more and still be productive. Now you can manually raise and lower the desk at will. However, you can also pre-program it with your preferred sitting position and your preferred standing position. The E7 Pro is also powerful because it has not one, but two motors. It's so strong it can even lift me up while I'm sitting on it. And it's incredibly sturdy because I filled a a glass of water to the brim and I try to get it to spill over by raising and lowering the desk. I even wobbled the desk a little bit and I could not get the glass to spill any water. Now, ultimately, when you do need to sit, that is where the C7 ergonomic office chair comes in. The C7 offers dynamic lumbar support and fully adjustable armrest. Also, the headrest is fully adjustable as well. You can raise and lower the chair and you can even kick your feet out for maximum comfortability. Oh, and did I mention it has wheels so you can roll around and have some fun. FlexiSpot also offers other accessories to help make your setup even better, such as the anti-fatigue mat for whenever you're in a standing position. They also offer monitor mount arms so that you can mount your monitors on the desk. And of course, they have cable management trays that you can install underneath the desk for a super clean look. Now, FlexiSpot offers a wide range of different desks from the E7 Plus to the E7 to the E7 Pro. And if you're on a budget, you can go with the E5 model. Now go ahead and find out more information and save some money by taking advantage of my discount code down below in the video description. Now, thank you, FlexiSpot, for sponsoring today's video. Okay, first of all, let's talk about the facts. And I'm going to be honest, we don't have a lot of facts to really go on. And what I mean by facts is information that is officially confirmed by the company. Everything else is really coming from leakers or their rumors or their educated guesses and things of that nature. But in terms of hardcore facts confirmed by these companies, there's not a lot to go on, but here's what we do know. We do know that Intel, AMD, and Nvidia are all working on their next generation GPUs. We do know that Intel is referring to their next GPU lineup as Battle Mage. We know that AMD is referring to their next GPUs as RDNA 4. We also know that AMD has officially confirmed they are shifting their focus away from the high-end market and primarily focusing on the low to mid-range GPU market. And we also also know that Nvidia is working on the Nvidia RTX 5000 series GPUs, which will be running on the Blackwell architecture. And now finally, one other fact that I'm aware of at least is that there is an event called CES, which will be taking place in January of 2025. And we also know that Nvidia has officially confirmed they will be doing a keynote presentation there. That's what we know for sure. Now going off from that, we start to get into the realm of educated guessing and then leaks and rumors and things of that nature. Now, everyone is making what I believe to be a very accurate guess here in saying that this keynote presentation is where NVIDIA will release and announce the RTX 5000 series GPUs. I think that is a very wise guess, a very educated guess. And I think there's a lot of evidence to back that up. Now, if that's true, what else do we have to go on here? Well, there is a new leak that is suggesting that AMD will also announce RDNA 4 GPUs around the CES timeframe, and they will release sometime in the first quarter of 2025. There are also articles indicating that Intel Battle Mage has been delayed until 2025 sometime. Some articles simply say 2025. Other articles do say early 2025. So early could mean the first quarter as well. And now there is a new rumor suggesting that 
the NVIDIA RTX 5000 series GPUs will release in this manner. The RTX 5090 and 5080 will launch in January. The RTX 5070 and 5070 Ti will launch in February. And the RTX 5060 and 5060 Ti will launch in March. Okay, so in terms of the release dates, You'll have to let me know if you're excited or not in the comment section below. But I do want to stress that this is not confirmed until Jensen walks across the stage and says, hey, this is exactly the price. Here's the performance we're claiming. And here's the release date. Everything leading up to that is a rumor or an educated guess or a leak. And so I know I've said that multiple times in this video and I'm sorry for that, but so many people will see a headline. And even though the headline clearly says rumor, they run with it and say, oh, this is a fact. It's not a fact. Anything can change between now, October of 2024 and January of 2025, anything can change. Now, with that being said, if Nvidia actually does move forward with this release schedule, that is something we've never seen from them before. That would be a very aggressive approach to launching the next gen of GPUs because typically we get the main cards like the 90, 80, 70, 60, and then later we'll get a Super or a TI. Or with the 40 series cards, it was a little bit different because A, we got both a TI and a Super Series variant of the cards. But in addition to that, the TI launched very early because Nvidia initially was trying to, you know, pull one over on us with a 4080 12 gigabyte, right? But then everybody pushed back on that and then Nvidia unlaunched it and then basically renamed it to the 4070 Ti. I do think the 4070 Ti was a card that was supposed to come out probably much later, maybe not even at all, because you're talking about releasing multiple GPUs back to back to back for three months in a row. That is something, again, we haven't really seen before, but it could be exciting depending on the pricing, but now let's switch over and start talking about the pricing. All right, look, when it comes to the pricing, we don't know, not officially, we do not know. I cannot stress that enough, yet everyone is acting like they know for sure what the pricing of the 50 series cards will be. And the reason why is because you have a YouTube channel called Moore's Law is Dead, and he very often will make these claims that he has inside sources that are telling him this and that. and. Oftentimes he's correct. And so, and he has told everybody that the 5090 will cost somewhere between $2,000 and $2,500. The 5080 will cost somewhere between $1,200 and $1,500. And the 5070 will cost somewhere between $600 and $700. Now, again, we don't know this for sure. I, I cannot stress that enough, but if these prices are accurate, here are some thoughts. Number one, there's no mention of a TI model. There's no mention of the 5060. So I wonder what that pricing will look like there. Number two, the 5070 is actually very believable because the 4070 also launched with a US MSRP of 599. So that is right there in the ballpark. For the 5080, also believable, but egregious because we've already seen this and people said they did not like it. If you remember, Nvidia launched the RTX 40 80 with a US MSRP of $1,199 or $1,200. And overwhelmingly, everybody hated it. People said, I'm either going to not buy a 4080 and get a 4070 or a 4070 Ti, or I will put more with it and go get a 4090. And that seemed to be the general consensus amongst everybody. When the 4080 Super came out, Nvidia could have said, hey, we're technically giving you a little bit more performance, emphasis on a little bit, and it's the same price. I think they knew that nobody would have accepted that. So instead, Nvidia said, hey, here's the 4080 Super. Technically, it's a little bit faster and we're gonna lower the price by $200. And so now it's a $1,000 product instead of a $1,200 product. And overall, that was much more well-received. I think the only issue there was that it was too little too late. And so I'm very confused why Nvidia would even remotely consider trying to do this pricing model again when everybody has already said, we don't want this, right? But here's the kicker. The kicker is that if you rejected the 4080 at $1,200, you had a really good alternative, the 7900 XTX for $1,000. This time around, AMD has already publicly stated we're not competing at the high end. Obviously, Nvidia knows this, and so Nvidia could technically go with another $1,200 pricing strategy on a 80 series card, except this time you wouldn't have another good viable option. You would basically have to stick with the hardware you have, 
or pay that price. Now look, for me personally, the 5090 is by far the most concerning because number one, that is a big gap in pricing. You're, you're talking a $500 range here. Okay, is it $19.99 or is it $24.99? How can you be that far off? I can understand the 5070 being $100 off, but $500, like what is it? Like that, that's a massive difference there. So what's going on? And as a content creator where people expect me to cover the 5090, I don't know how I'm gonna afford that, but this time around, I don't think I can justify $2,500. That is ridiculous. So I really hope that price is not right. Now, if we switch over and look at PCGamer.com, they ran an article back on October the 14th, so not that long ago, and it says, leakers suggest the RTX 5090 won't have a significant price increase, and even with AMD down for the count, here's how we think the RTX 50 series will line up. And of course, the leaker they're referring to is the same leaker that everybody refers to, which is Copite 7 Kimmy. I don't believe there will be a significant get price increase for RTX 5090. That's encouraging to hear. I'm glad he didn't say the opposite. Oh, there will definitely be a significant price increase, but that still doesn't tell us much, right? Okay, there's not a significant price increase, but does that mean there is a price increase? And if so, by how much? And how do you define significant? So there's a lot here we don't know, but it's interesting to talk about. But either way, these prices sound horrible, and I really hope they're not true. So I'm really hoping that the last article by PC Gamer is more accurate when they say it won't be a significant price increase. But also they were only talking about the 5090 there in that headline. So the 5080 could very well be $1,200 or more. And I really hope that's not the case for the people who want a 5080. So anyway, but now let's switch over and talk about some of the specifications and overall performance claims. And now we have this table on the most recent article that is filled in as follows as you see on the screen right now. And overall, this is what we're looking at. So they have the 5090, 5080, 5070 Ti, 5070, 5060 Ti, and 5060 all listed here in this chart. And you can even see that it clearly says rumored specs. But in addition to that, they also have a new label right next to the 5070 Ti, 5060 Ti, and the 5060. But for the CUDA core count, for the 5080, it has 10,752 CUDA cores. But when you look at the 5090, it is 21,760 CUDA cores cores. That is a massive difference in terms of overall CUDA core count. We don't have any information on the clock speeds at this time. When you look at the memory, they're claiming all these new cards will run GDDR7. And even though the 5070 Ti, 5060 Ti, and 5060 are not filled in with GDDR7, I really have a hard time believing that they won't run that when all the cards around them are running that. But again, another massive difference here between the 5090 and 5080, you're talking double the amount of VRAM. And when it comes to the memory bus, you're talking 500 and 12 bit versus 256 bit. And the 5070 is listed at 192 bit. Moving down for the power connector, Nvidia is still gonna use this 16 pin power connector that has caused so many issues. For the display connectors, they're now moving over to DisplayPort 2.1a. And it's looking like most of these models will have three DisplayPort 2.1a's and one HDMI 2.1. The PCIe interface will be PCIe 5.0 by 16 for most of these cards until you get down to the 5060 Ti and 5060, which they're claiming will be PCIe 5.0 by 8. They have no information listed regarding the pricing at all. And of course, for the announcements and the launches, we've already covered that information. And also looking at the board power, they're claiming the 5090 will be 600 watts, the 5080 will be 400 watts, and the 5070 will be 250 watts. And currently no information on the 5070 Ti or the 5060 Ti or the 5060. Again, these are rumored specs. They're not confirmed, right? But assuming they are confirmed, once again, we're going to have a situation where it really is going to come down to pricing because if you launch a 5080 at $1,200, even if the 5090 is sitting at $1,800 or $1,900, Given the specifications, I can already see the high-end market saying the same thing they said with the 40 series cards, skip the 5080, get the 5090. I mean, you're literally talking about double the specifications in, in some of these categories here. The 5090 is radically ahead of the 5080. And not to mention they're claiming the 5080 only has 16 gigabytes of VRAM. What's up with that? Now, I have seen some rumors claiming there's going to be two different models of the 5080, one with 16 gigabytes of VRAM, and then I think I saw another article that said it might have 24 gigabytes of VRAM. Now, 20 or 24 is really what the 5080 should have, 
not 16. But right now, 16 gigabytes of VRAM seems to be what most people are reporting that the 5080 will have. And again, if we do end up with these two different models of the 5080, where one has 16 gigabytes of VRAM and one has 20 or 24 gigabytes of VRAM, that feels awfully familiar with a 4080 12 gigabyte versus the 4080 16 gigabyte. And we all know how well that did not go, right? Now, 600 watts for the 5090 is something that I'm really kind of confused about and concerned with. I'm obviously concerned because that is a ton of power for a GPU, right? But if you remember, people said the same thing about the 4090 and really what that meant was that some models, not all, but some models of the 4090 could go up to 600 watts. However, in gaming, you're not gonna pull anywhere near that. And so I'm kind of thinking that will be the same thing here for the 5090, but of course, time will tell. We'll have to wait and see how things go. Now, 400 watts for the 5080, is definitely believable because both the 3080 and the 4080 ran at 320 watts. So you're talking about an 80 watt increase here, which is noticeable, but it's not something to be you know radically taken aback by. I mean, it's definitely believable for sure. Again, the thing that I'm most concerned about is the 5090s supposedly doing 600 watts. I, I really hope that is up to 600 watts and not just out of the box, hey, 600 watts. <laughs> That would be ridiculous. Anyway, look, those are some of my thoughts and opinions on things that are going on. It's so hard to make these types of videos because so much of what we're talking about is in that category of a leak, a rumor, an educated guess, things of that nature. We don't really have a lot of tangible information to go on. And also not to mention the fact that this stuff is constantly changing all the time. So everything I said today could be completely null and void tomorrow. Tomorrow, there could be some type of big leak that comes out that says, oh no, the 5090 is only gonna be 500 watts and it's confirmed to be $1,700. You just don't know, right? You really have to just wait and see how things go. Now, as we get closer and closer to CES 2025, I have no doubt in my mind, we will get more and more leaks and probably the closer we get, those leaks will be more and more accurate. Okay, look, here are my final thoughts. And honestly, this is my biggest concern this generation. I'm concerned with the fact that AMD has stepped away from the high-end GPU market. Again, from a business standpoint, I agree with their decision. If I'm in charge of the AMD GPU division, I'm gonna go where the majority of gamers are. And that is the low to mid range. Most people are not at that high end. And so if I'm having to make a business decision to grow my market share, I'm absolutely gonna do what AMD is about to do. I'm gonna go all in on that low to mid range and really try to capture all of those gamers because we can debate all day long about how accurate or inaccurate the Steam hardware survey is. But if you look at that, you can see so many people have Nvidia GPUs and the majority of those GPUs are in that 60 to 70 class category. Very few people have have 90 class series GPUs or 80 class series GPUs. So with that being said, that's enough information right there for AMD to say, hey, we need more market share, we want more market share, and the place to get it is in that low to mid range. So I absolutely don't fault AMD for that, but as a consumer, I'm now really concerned because Nvidia is completely unchecked at that high end. They can charge whatever they want and get away with it because they won't have any competition. The only thing that will stop them or get the prices to come down is if everybody in the PC community collectively comes together and just says, we will not buy it at this price. But unfortunately, there will always be people to buy regardless of the price. And I think you know that as well as I do. Anyway, look, if you like this type of content, please do me a favor, hit that like button because it goes a long way in helping me out. If you're new, get subscribed, drop a comment down below. Let me know what do you think about all of this stuff? Are you excited for the 50 series cards? Are you planning to get a 5070, 5060, 5080, 5090? Let me know in the comment section below, what are your thoughts? Do you think there's any validity to these rumors and leaks? Or do you think most of it is inaccurate? I'm very curious to know your thoughts. Let's have a good, civil, positive conversation down below in the video comments. Thank you for watching. Until next time, E-Rock out.